I'm Alan with EarthGlow Inc. And in today's video, I'm going to be testing out some concrete pigments from Direct Colors. Uh, now, if you haven't yet watched my concrete candle making uh, tutorial, I would recommend checking that out before watching this video. But anyways, let's get right into it. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. And the very first thing I want to do actually before I start with the concrete candles is this is supposed to be a lid that was custom made for me to fit these Amazon molds from this little Etsy shop. Um, and I'll link the Etsy shop below in case any of you want to check this out. I have no idea what it's going to look like in person. So, oh my God, he gave me two. Did I order two? I feel like I ordered one. Oh my God. I think he gave me two. Holy cow. Okay, this looks really good so far. Obviously the writing is going to be backwards for on your screen. But just as you can see, I got the, um, I think it's called Pioro One font, uh, something very similar to it. That's the font that I usually use. Uh, for my name on my labels, but these look great. And the other things I have is just a little teaspoon measurement that I'm not gonna use anymore for cooking um, to measure out my powders, my pigments, and then just a pair of nitrile gloves um, to keep it off of my hands. And then obviously my cement all, the star ingredient, um, and that is sitting on the floor because it's in like this giant bucket. And that is from the Home Depot is where I got that. It's really inexpensive. This is like my workroom here, so don't mind all the storage stuff for when I do my lives. Um, but I store my concrete mix in just one of these Home Depot bins with a lid. And then I usually just keep a one cup scoop in there, so that way it's just nice and easy for me to go ahead and measure out my concrete. And usually what I'll do is I'll take like a little bit more than one cup of the cement all, and then I'm gonna actually do this over the bucket here. Um, just pour it into my solo cup. Um, and that is about the amount that will fill one of these Amazon molds. So just over one cup. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just take my distilled water and I'm gonna just pour a little bit in here. And I don't ever precisely measure this. I know some people might knock me for it, um, but I do just find that humidity can really alter how this... Um, how much water the, you need for the cement all. So I'm just going to be stirring this. And you should probably wear a mask when you're doing this because there can be some dust. Um, I don't wear a mask, but it's probably recommended to wear a dust mask um, when you're doing this. It usually takes a few minutes of stirring. So I'm going to fast forward... Actually, you know what? I'm not going to fast forward because I want you to see all the different textures that this goes through. Um, and what I'm kind of doing as I'm stirring is I'm scraping on the sides and just kind of integrating it into this mix. And you want to just keep stirring until all the clumps have dissolved. And I'm actually going to add a little bit more water because I can tell from looking at this in the amount... Um, of clumps that are in it that I want just a little bit more water here. So I'm going to add a little bit more. And it's really easy to overdo it with the water I found. Okay, so now I'm going to measure out. I'm going to try this first one. This is one, two, two. And it looks almost like a kind of like maroon color. Um, I'm going to measure out one teaspoon of this. Just get about a teaspoon, and I'm gonna see how this works. So I'm not exactly sure. This is my very first time trying this, so I have no idea what this is gonna do. It's supposed to be like really saturated though, so we will see. And also on Direct Colors website, you have to select like the color of your concrete when you're um, choosing your colors. So they have one that's like for white and then one that's for 
the gray concrete. So I'm not seeing a whole lot happening here. This literally looks gray. Did I like not use enough? Um, this literally looks the same. Like, I don't see much of any difference. I'm gonna keep stirring here. Um, hmm, I'm still stirring. And like, I see like a subtle difference, but I'm honestly, I'm not seeing much of anything from that one teaspoon. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one more teaspoon of this. Um, hmm. Okay, so yeah, this is not looking like much of anything at all. Maybe it'll be different when this like hardens in the mold and cures. Um, Cause I've heard a lot of people saying good things about this. Okay, um, so this is what it's looking like. I am starting to see some color change after the second teaspoon. Um, I don't know if we should add one more or let's just pour it as is and see. And I just kind of wait as the bubbles go in and then gradually keep pouring. And then I alternate between like gradual pouring and then tapping of the mold. And this usually takes like a minute or two to get all the bubbles out, like in between the pouring and the tapping. Do any of you see that? It looks almost like the coloring is pooling up on the top. Okay, let me show you all what this looks like up close. I don't know if this is gonna show up on camera at all, but it almost looks like the colorant is like pooling on the top of that. It doesn't look like it's supposed to be doing that. Um, okay, so we're just gonna keep going and I'm gonna go ahead and pour the lid. And I'm gonna move this one off to the side here. I'm gonna move it off to the side. And then I'm gonna pour the lid. And probably should have had a little bit more concrete for this. No! And I'm gonna run out. I should have done more, guys. I may have to finish this one off with like a different color or something. is our first one okay so for the next one I'm thinking I'm gonna do a little bit more of the concrete so I'm gonna do like a cup and a quarter or thereabouts um, and I'm gonna do this over the concrete bin just so I don't spill all over and so there's a cup and I'm gonna do like another quarter maybe and I might have some left over from this but that way I'll be able to do the lid um, and, okay, and I tried to wipe every bit of pigment off of that spoon, but I didn't want to get it wet, um, because I do not think, uh, water would go well with these pigments, and I don't have another teaspoon. And I'm just going to start with one. Okay, so this is kind of turning orange-ish, but I'm just gonna do the one teaspoon for this one and see what happens. Just about there. And then I'm gonna do the mold as well. The top, I should say. They're on both molds. And then just tapping out those bubbles. 
Okay, so just a little bit there. And then I just kind of like go from the bottom, almost like kneading bread. And I like go around and kind of work all the dry bits into the water as much as possible at first. And then you just have to keep... Let's go ahead and try this really dark, dramatic charcoal color. And I did go ahead and wash this with soap and water. Um, and I just really dried it good. So, let's do about a teaspoon of that one. My prediction is that this one's gonna be like darker. Like it's gonna show up more, I think. And I can already tell I'm gonna need some more water for this. So let's just add a tiny bit more. It's very easy to overdo it with the water. So you can kind of see, I don't see a lot of difference at first, but with those other two, once I poured them, I definitely was seeing like the colors. The orange one especially looks nice and vibrant to me so far in the mold. And from what I've been hearing, the colors with these are a lot more consistent um, as opposed to using acrylic paints. Okay, so let's give that one a pour. one a tiny bit too full but I think it'll still be okay Okay. I go wash the spoon again. And I'm just gonna do like one cup for this one uh, for the rest of them actually, because I'm not, I don't have any more lids. Um, I only got two of the lids, so. Well, I think I only bought one, but I think he gave me two, which was really sweet of him. Um, but I think I only paid for one. And I will do a video tomorrow as well of how this turns out. Okay, so I'm gonna add in the pigment now. And I think this time I wanna try this nice brown color, 113. And I'm just gonna do a teaspoon. Just about a teaspoon there for that one cup. 
And this is the 113 pigment. And I hadn't quite mixed in all the concrete yet, so I'm gonna do a little bit more mixing. I think I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more. And it's almost like you don't see the color and you just gotta keep mixing. Because at first, it literally looks like nothing. Wow, this one, I almost see nothing. I think I'm gonna add one more teaspoon of the 113 because I'm seeing like no change there at all. So I'm gonna add one more. Definitely starting to see a beautiful brown take shape here. And I'm gonna just pour this into my mold. And I don't um, prefer to wash out my molds between uses for these because it actually leaves like a shiny finish on the outside of the jar. Um, and if you don't, uh, if you just, you know, don't wash them out in between uses, it actually, makes more of like a matte finish on the outside of these um, vessels, which is what I personally like. I'll add my water. Just start with, no, I'm gonna do a tiny bit more. I think it's like one part or three parts concrete mix to one part water approximately. At least that's what it says on the bag, I believe, that you're supposed to do. There's definitely not enough water there, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. But humidity just plays such a big role in this that I find it's better to just kind of go for the consistency I'm looking for. And usually with candle making and everything like that, it's good to be super precise. But with certain things, nature kind of has its role. Okay, and then I'm gonna try this 204, this green. And I did wash out my teaspoon um, again with water and soap and then dry it really good. So green. Oh yeah, that's definitely looking nice. Wow, okay, let's go ahead and pour this one. Oh, I didn't get quite all the clumps out of there, but that's okay. This is just for my experimentation. I'm not gonna be selling these. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more. by the magic of YouTube timing, it is the next day. And I just wanna give you a little pan of how these are looking. 
Um, I don't know why they look so weird, like grainy. I don't know if I did something wrong, but let's just unmold them and see what happens. So I'm gonna just start with this first one. And I have a whole video on how to unmold these because the Amazon molds can be like a little bit challenging. So if you wanna check out that video, if you're working with these molds and struggling, um, I think it could be useful. This one, I need to cut the lip a little bit more, it looks like, on this one. But it will still work. And I just kind of work my way around. I found with these molds, if you go too fast, it can actually, like if you put too much pressure in any given area, oh my gosh, it can actually break the concrete pretty easily. And something like this on the base, I will just kind of break with my hands and then sand. Um, and there are a lot of little air bubbles. I'm still new to these concrete candles. So, you know, these are just for my own testing. So that will not be a problem. As for the color of this, like, I don't really like it, but I will say that a lot of this kind of unevenness could be because the there's still water content in the concrete. It's like, it takes it like three days to fully evaporate, um, in my experience anyway. So sometimes I've thought, oh, it doesn't look very good. And then I wait like a few more days and the color is much more even. Okay, so here's this brown one. Let's see. I'm gonna do a video too on the new molds that I just purchased from uh, Modern Craft Labs, I think it's called, so that you can see those. They're a little bit of a different shape and they're actually designed for concrete. Mm, this one I think I like a bit more. And again, I'm not paying too much attention to the unevenness in the color because I'm thinking a lot of that is just because there's still water content in this concrete. I just made these last night. So, you know, that three days is kind of my, kind of my rule um, for all the water to kind of evaporate and to get that evenness in color. I'm gonna fast forward through some of this and um, show you what they all look like when I finish. So much easier to have these molds cut. Um, they're really kind of challenging to work with. And I think it's just because they were designed for resin rather than concrete. Um, but you know, cutting them definitely does help. And this is that one, two, two pigment that I added the two um, teaspoons to. is the last one here. Now probably what I'm most excited to do is unmold these lids um, from that small Etsy shop. And I have no idea what to expect. This is the one that I kind of messed up a little bit. I didn't have enough concrete, so I kind of filled the rest of it in. 
these are really easy to unmold. <gasps> oh my god! Wow, okay. Well, this I would consider, like, pretty good. Um, I'll bet you if I worked with a little bit of a thinner texture, I could get more even lettering. Um, so I'm gonna try that because you can see how the lettering is, it's pretty good. But you see how I have like a lot of bubbles in here in general. So I'm gonna work with some different techniques and see what I can do to improve that lettering. And yeah, I definitely got this too full because I think it'll fit now. Yeah, but that's a perfect fit. So if you're looking for something to fit the Amazon molds, um, that's a really nice fit, but I do want to work a little bit more with that lettering. And then let's try the second one here. And this is really kind of messed up from what I did. Yeah, and again, like it's pretty okay, but it's kind of a little bit hard to read. And I'm gonna blame that on myself because of the amount of bubbles that are around this. Um, so I'm gonna play around a bit more with these. 